Welcome creative photographers. If you're new in these parts, I'm Hayley from Creative Photo Folk and in this tutorial you're going to learn the Photoshop process for transforming your photos into watercolour art. So full disclosure, I have been looking for a watercolour tutorial that I like for a couple of years. I even recorded a whole YouTube tutorial to create this look here, but in the end I decided I didn't want to release it because I just don't like how this looks. I don't like this section here. I don't think that's how most painters paint. So I ditched the idea altogether. And ever since then I've been experimenting with every watercolour tutorial I come across to see what I like and what I don't like. And so now I've tailored my own version of the watercolour tutorial that looks a little bit more like this and like this. So let's get stuck in. So for this example, my original starting document looked like this. Now I chose this picture because I really like how the boxiness of the houses looks really for no other reason. I, that wasn't going to help the effect or anything. I just liked how this scene looked and it is kind of a prime location in my city. Yes, there is a bit of construction going on, but I kind of even like that. So I wanted to use a landscape or architecture photo to work on for my first example. So to create it, the first thing you obviously want to do is open your image in Photoshop by going to File, Open and choosing the file number, or you can open it from Lightroom by going to Photo, Edit In, Edit In Adobe Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do is create kind of a watercolour paper effect. Now you could take a photo of some watercolour paper, you could find a stock image of watercolour paper, but for this tutorial I really want to try and keep it as contained as possible inside Photoshop so you don't need to go looking for other things. So first thing we're going to do is make a new layer with a new layer button which is just a little plus sign in a square. Make sure that's highlighted. We're going to go to Window and then Patterns. Now in here you may see some stuff or you may not. If not, you're going to go to this little hamburger menu and click Legacy Patterns and More and that will bring in this folder here. Once we toggle that open, you'll see some different surfaces. Now we're going to go into the Artist Surfaces folder and you're going to hover over each one until you find the one that's called Watercolor, which I believe is, oh, there's a couple I think. We're going to go for this kind of plainy looking one and click on that. And then we can hide that menu and that has now created sort of a watercolour paper. Hard to see from far away but it's just got a tiny bit of texture to it. Now this won't make any sense for the moment but I'm just going to go to my blend mode where it says normal and change that to multiply which is going to blend it with the layer below. Next thing we're going to do is highlight our main image, whatever you've chosen to work with, and we're going to press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it. And then we're going to go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. And what that means is we can start putting filters on it now, and it means once we've applied our filters, we can go back in and change them without making it a smart object. Once you've applied a filter, they're kind of stuck and you can't modify them. Now we're going to dive into the world of filters. And this means we'll be heading into our filter gallery, which is probably the oldest, most tackiest part of Photoshop, but it's good in situations like this. To be able to access our filters, we first need to make sure that our image is only 8-bit because filters only work with 8-bit images. So we'll go to image and then mode. Now what you want to choose here is 8-bit. So if you've got anything else there, make sure that it's 8-bit. Then we can go to filter, filter gallery, which will be grayed out if it's not 8-bit and that's how you know. And the first filter we're going to work with is the dry brush. Now this is what the dry brush filter does. Just makes it a little more painterly. And the settings we're going to use here over on the side are 10, which I'm just typing in and tabbing to the next box, 10, 10, and one. So that's before and that's after. So it just takes out some of the detail, which you'd expect in a watercolor image. So we will hit okay. That will apply that filter. And now our image has that softer look. Next, we're gonna go back into the filter gallery and this time we're going to use the filter cut out. Now these filters can sometimes take a little while to load, but in this case, we're going to use eight, zero and one. And this creates that kind of look that I didn't like in the original version, but we'll do a few things to soften that up. So once you've got those dialed in, we'll hit okay. And yes, it creates this ugly banding that I really don't like. And to reduce that, we're going to on the top filter, which is the one we just applied, 
Be good if they named them, but they don't. And over on the right here, you'll see a little kind of menu item. If you double click it, now working with filters is slow because it does have to do a lot of rendering. I'll edit most of this part out. And then it brings up some blending options. So for this, we want to change it from normal to pin light. And that really softens up. Then we will hit OK. Next, we're going to give it a little bit of a blur. So we'll go to Filter, Blur, and then Smart Blur. And we're going to make our radius 25 and our threshold 100. Now, this is really taking out some of that detail, which is what we want. But again, we will be affecting this shortly to soften it up a bit. So we'll hit OK. And again, we're just going to double click the little menu next to it. This time we're going to make the mode screen, which gets rid of some of that darkness and brings back a little more detail. And then we're going to make the opacity 50%. So rather than dragging down this and trying to get it right, I'm just gonna highlight and type 50. And that brings back quite a bit more detail. So that is what we want. Now I wanna give it a more illustrative effect. To do this, I'm actually going to highlight our bottom layer, so our, our original copy, and press Control or Command J again, because I wanna make a copy of the original unaffected image. And I'm going to drag that above the layer we've been working on, but under the paper. And now I'm gonna to go to Filter, Stylize, and then Find Edges. And that creates this kind of more illustrative look, but it brings in awful colors with it. So to fix that, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Hue Saturation. And I'm going to pull that saturation out to get rid of any of that ugly color and hit OK. Then we're going to change the blend mode from normal to soft light, which gives it that more illustrative look. And then we'll make it a little bit softer by changing the opacity to 70%. So that is before and after. And just while it was zoomed in, you can see what that watercolor paper is doing, giving it this kind of more textured effect, which you may or may not like. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now we're going to go back to that layer we've been working on with the filters, and we're going to go to Filter, Filter Gallery. This time I'm going to use Paint Dorps, which is this one here. And the settings we'll use are 5 and then 5. And for brush type, I'm going to go with Wide Sharp. So that's what that did, just gave it a little bit more detail and we'll hit OK. I think that does actually start to make it look a little bit watercolory. Then I'm going to add one final filter to that stack by again making sure that it is highlighted and going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm gonna make this quite high, so about 90. So it sort of blurs it into unrecognition. Hit OK. And then we're going to double click that little menu icon again. We're going to change this to soft light and make that opacity about 74. So that's before and after, okay. Now let's zoom out and take a look at what we've got so far. We can actually just have a little zoom around the image. I think this is looking pretty cool. We might just see what it looks like without what we've done so far and then add it back. So it's just given it a little bit of a more illustrative painterly look. Now this technique is experimental. So all this time we've had our original layer on, I might just switch it off. And that's giving us even more of a watercolory effect, but it has made it really washed out. So I'll just switch back on that illustrative layer that I switched off for a second. So to fix that, I'm now gonna add a levels layer and I'm gonna put it underneath that paper layer. So to do that, we will go to our little half pie again. I will choose levels. I'm gonna try and bring some more contrast back in. So I'm going to pull up the bottom to about 27. I'm going to pull up the midtones to about 0.93 and I'll leave the highlights where they are. So that's given us a little bit more punch. Next, I really wanted to bring up the vibrance. So again, with levels highlighted, I'm going to go to a vibrance adjustment layer and I'm gonna pull this up until I feel like it's kind of colorful enough. So I'll probably end up with about 61 and I'm just gonna take out a touch of saturation. So kind of minus seven. Then I'm going to go to that find edges layer we had that made the kind of illustrative look. Make a copy of it with Control or Command J and I'm going to pull it to the very top and I'm going to keep it at soft light but just bring down its opacity a little bit more. Now for some reason I just noticed that my main layer was had the opacity brought down to 70% so I've just brought that back up. So you can play with your filters like this. You might find that this fine edges layer is just a little bit too strong and maybe it is. I'll just pull out a touch more opacity there. But let's quickly zoom in. 
not looking too bad. I think certainly looking better than this. But now we're going to turn it more into kind of like an unfinished painting. So with our main layer highlighted, I'm just going to add a layer mask to it. I'm going to make that layer mask black so that we don't see what we've been working on. And you can do that by Control or Command I, which will invert it. We will still see that fine edges layer and any adjustments we made above it. And to prevent that, I'm just going to highlight this layer and clip it. So to clip it, you can hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and then click between those two layers. So this layer is now applied to this layer. And I'm just going to switch this top one off for the moment. Cool. So we should be seeing virtually nothing or just a white screen. So now we are going to go to your brushes. So we'll load your brush with B or it's this one here in your toolbar. And then we're going to go into our brush presets. I'm going to go over here where there's a little cog and go to legacy brushes. And I'm going to hit that. Now, what that will do is load these legacy brushes inside. We're going to look for the brushes that say wet media. So you may need to toggle some open or closed. And it's the very bottom one by the looks. So the brush we want is actually called watercolor textured surface. And to find it, we can just type that in. This brings it up. So this is the brush we want. Once we click it, we'll just click off. And then I can make my brush size larger by using my square bracket keys. And then we can start to bring in parts of the image. Now, when you paint over bits a second time, it kind of darkens them. So that's a cool little thing to do. Now, I highly recommend that if you want yours to look really realistic, that you go to Google and you search for watercolor brushes for Photoshop. You will find some for free and you will find some you'll need to pay for. But as I mentioned earlier, I like to keep things contained in Photoshop. So I'm just trying to work with the brushes they have. They don't have very many good watercolor brushes, however. So instead, one thing you can do in Photoshop is go to here, then your little settings panel here, and you can go to get more brushes. What that does is takes us to Photoshop's page where you'll be able to download more brushes for free. In here, you'll find these brushes from Carl T. Webster. I'm not sure his association with Photoshop and you can download these watercolor brushes. So once you are, have downloaded those, you'll find those inside Photoshop. And another brush I like to use is Kyle's Soft Irregular Wash, which brings up two, and we'll just grab that first one, and then we'll make that bigger again. And this will give you sort of a softer edge, so you can use that too if you like, or you could use both in tandem to just bring back little bits of your image to give it more of a watercolor feel. It does take a little bit to catch up sometimes. So we can paint over some bits to make them a little bit darker. And the reason for that is because the flow is only at 28% and that is built into the brush, I believe. Then if we wanna remove some sections, I'm just gonna swap to black and then paint away some bits. We can also, for these edges, sort of bring down the opacity of the brush. So bring it down to say 37 swap back to white, and then we can just paint some softer bits in on these edges. So all stuff to experiment with as usual. Now, this is when I like to bring back that fine edges layer we turned off before that looked a bit gross before. But now we've done this step, I like that it gives it a more sketchily look. So this is the version we've created today. Let me just group it so I can show you what I worked on earlier. So that's today's version. This is the one I've worked on previously, and I actually kept the fine edges around the edges. I'm not sure why I did that, but I kind of like having that sketchly bit. If you don't, what you can do is highlight the layer mask on our main layer, hold down alter option and drag it to that layer. What that does is makes a copy of that layer mask. So it's now applying to that as well. And so that's my watercolor image. Now I just quickly want to show you another version and maybe do a little few extra steps to show you a cool way to make it even more like a painting. And so we'll look at this portrait here. Did something a bit different, which was to add some paint daubs. So let's talk about how I did that. So basically I added a new layer. It doesn't really matter where it is in the stack, but mine was under the paper layer. And this is where Kyle's watercolor brushes will come in handy. So what I did is went back to my brushes. So load brush tool first to bring it up. 
And if you just type spatter in here, these are Kyle's brushes in the watercolor one. And you can just experiment with which one you want to try. I'll just grab the first one for this. Now, what you want to do is sample colors from the image. So to do that, you hold down Alt or Option and it turns into a little eyedropper. And then you can sample a color from the image and then paint that onto the background. Now, these brushes sort of change each time you press. So this isn't a great one. Let's try a different one. I'll sample a color again. See, this one's a bit more spread out. So there's a little bit of experimenting you may want to do here. And you can actually just make it really big and sort of get some bigger. But you can see what this achieves. And then I just brought down the opacity a touch because I thought it was taking too much attention and it looks more like paint than watercolor, but just gives it a little bit more of a painterly touch. As opposed to this one, which I think the brush strokes are nicer, but I really just hated the detail in it. It just does look like terrible Photoshop filters. But let me just zoom in so you can see a little bit better on these. I think that one looks kind of cool. And then in, on her, so you can see the detail. And so, my friends, that's how you turn your photos into watercolors. Now, if you have found this a little bit fiddly to follow, then inside my course, Photo Fanatics, you'll find these same videos, but also with written directions. So it's easy for you to follow without having to refer back to the video every time. And you'll find the link to join in the comments below. Creating more artistic photos is what I'm all about. And this is one way to do so, quite literally. I hope you enjoyed playing with this one. And as always, I'd love if you shared your results in Creative Photo Folks Facebook group linked below. And to learn many more creative photography techniques, tap that subscribe button so we can hang out again. Happy creating!